The world was shocked in February when Russia invaded Ukraine. Since, since then, the world has been inspired by the resilience and courage of the Ukrainian people. The past eight months have been catastrophic for Ukrainian families, many of whom turn for hope to the country's leadership. To tell us how the tech sector can support Ukraine and help the country get back on its feet, we're delighted and privileged now to be joined by our special guest, the First Lady of Ukraine, Olena Zelenska. Hello, I must confess, when it comes to high technologies, I'm just a user. But user experience is still valuable, isn't it? You often hear that your tech innovations move the world. But I think it's more than that. You have the power to determine the direction in which this world moves. After all, the dystopias we read about in science fiction novels and the threats of the destruction of life destruction are much closer than you think. We felt it in Ukraine because of Russian terror. Because Russia puts technology at the service of terror. What you see is the aftermath of using such technology. This is a missile and drone attack on Kyiv. They call it Shahed killers. Experts say that their technology is quite simple, but it is not enough to save people. It's enough to kill people. It's enough because those who own technology help in terror. These are people who were killed by drones in Kyiv two weeks ago. They died in their own home. Bogdan Zamchenko was a young IT specialist. His wife, Victoria, was six months pregnant. They were found next to each other under the rubble. When you hear a story like this about Ukraine, you should know it is not an isolated case. In most cases, Russia bombs civilians, our houses, streets, and civilian infrastructure. They deliberately choose leave targets. You may have seen the results of this Bellingcat investigation. Bellingcat found that Russian IT specialists are playing an active part in Russia's terror, terrorist hits on Ukrainian cities. Before the war, they used to work in private IT companies. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Your chosen profession your field of expertise is now a battlefield in Russia's war against Ukraine, a battleground between good and evil. And some IT specialists in Russia have made their choice to be aggressors and murderers. At the same time, others can help us defend against them and use power to stop this terror, save people and restore the destroyed. This is exactly what you can do. You can help, help us to stop the list of terrorist victims from expanding. Young hematologist. She dropped her son off at kindergarten on her way to work. But she never made it to the clinic. She died in her car because of the Russian strike. An entire family in Dnipro Daughter, son, mother, and grandmother were killed by a Russian missile. Only the family dog survived, and him, howling on the ruins. 
It may seem a tragedy of one family, but in reality it is a tragedy for the whole nation. The whole Ukraine was depressed when we saw it. I didn't know these people personally, but I know people who did. It's really close. Technology has, in many ways, brought us closer together through social media and messenger apps. But imagine, all of a sudden, a social media account stops getting updated. The person running it no longer responds to messages. And then you see the black and white photos. And you know that the unthinkable has happened. During this month of war, thousands of Ukrainian social media accounts will never be updated again. Those people are gone. Now Russia, Russian terrorists have chosen a new target for their attacks, our energy infrastructure. They are attacking our power plants. There are blackouts everywhere in the country. This is what Kyiv, our capital, usually looks like. And this is what is our evenings look like now. As a result of Russian attacks in our power plants, every day we have no electricity, no communication and no internet for hours. I think you can understand how challenging it is for a modern person, especially if you work remotely or online. And you know what else is challenging? Taking your children to a bomb shelter instead of taking them to school or after school activities. And when children in Ukraine are attending school, we have to supply them with food and water because we do not know how long they will stay in the shelter. Now we have to invest not in high-tech solutions in schools, we have to buy generators. And I'm still struggling to see these two things together in the 21st century, children and bomb shelters. I couldn't believe that in 2022, children would be sheltering away from bombs and missiles, just like in the old days of brutal wars. As one little boy said, people should be flying to Mars, not run into their basements. Now, together with our children, we are forced to light matches and candles across the country as the sun sets. It feels like a trip to the past, a trip we did not ask for. We have learned to select the most powerful power banks instead of the most beautiful lighting. We must consciously limit our electricity consumption so that it is enough for everyone because of this shortage in the aftermath of terrorist attack, attacks on power plants. Imagine what it is like when terrorists destroy 40 percent of the energy generation in the whole country, in particular 90 percent of wind energy and 50 percent of solar power plants. We are now learning to counter terrorist drones and missiles. We are strengthening our cybersecurity. We ensure the stability of all digital systems, both public and private sectors. And our minister, Minister of Digital Transformation, Mikhail Fedorov, will tell you more about it. I urge you all to listen to his talk. You will hear what specific projects you can join in the areas of your professional interest. From my side, I would like to invite you to join and help in the era where everyone can help in person. To help those who are under the constant terrorist attacks. Surviving a war zone and under such conditions that we have in Ukraine is not without consequences. We have conducted studies recently and found that more than two-thirds of Ukrainians now suffer from anxiety. Almost half of our families 
have been separated. I'm sure you understand that there is no point in talking about happening rating in Ukraine at all. The country and its people are in total crisis mode. These days, many of my projects are focused on mental health. But few organizations, few organizations and individuals are equipped to help with mental health in the context of full-scale, constant terror. So we have to develop war-focused mental health projects from the scratch. This is how our national mental health program came into being with the support of World Health Organization. We want to ensure that every medical worker, policeman or policewoman, rescue worker and call center worker, anyone who works with people, is trained to be equipped to deal with psychological trauma. We want to self-help apps to appear on every smartphone in Ukraine. We want to make sure that modern-day technology is used to save, not harm, people. For example, this is Sasha from Bucha. She's trying out her new bionic prosthetic hand. Russians showed their car when she and her parents were trying to escape the occupied city. Sasha bled for two days in the basement. Because of the occupant's presence, it was impossible to provide timely medical assistance. Now the kid is learning to control her new hand, and it was made in the USA. And this is Ivan. Russian tank ran over the car with this boy and his stepfather. Ivan's stepfather died, Ivan survived, but he lost his leg. This video was taken in California just a few days after Ivan received his new prosthetic leg. Prosthetics are, are high-tech. I first properly understood the extent of the advances made in prosthetics when I met the incredible Hugh Herr in the United States. He's a professor at MIT, and he uses prosthesis created in his laboratory. And people like him are inspiration. We have set ourselves a goal in Ukraine. Even if Russia wants to take away and destroy it, the way of life of our people and life overall, we have to give these people protection and all the opportunities to live. All the victims of Russian terror should receive the best treatment, the best rehabilitation, and the best procedures. Everything to make sure that can help living a full life. Russian terrorists are bombing our schools. Despite this, we aim to give our children access to education and anything else they need to be able to dream about the future. This is an area in which absolutely everyone can help. It's very easy to find projects to support our fight for freedom, our defense against terror, and the rescue for our people. And I'm asking you to find these projects. I cannot emphasize more. Helping Ukraine now means helping the world become a better place, where development and innovation are loaded, not terror where children like Sasha and Devan and many others can have limbs again and can learn and dream about space instead of hiding in basements, being afraid of their lives. To implement such projects and help people, I set up and launched my foundation a month ago. The focus of my foundation is the person. I believe that the recovery of our country begins with the people. If the strength of people is restored, the whole country will be restored. The enemy seeks to throw us back to the Middle Ages. Its primary targets are schools and hospitals. Here you can see their ruins. 
and there are already hundreds of them. So my first two priorities are education and medical care. And the third priority of my foundation is humanitarian aid. In other words, helping people to get back to life they are used to. When they have a place to live, food to eat, and warm clothes to wear. All the things are already needed. They are needed throughout Ukraine, and in our the occupied regions in particular, where many people remain in partially or fully destroyed houses. A lot of people refuse to leave their homes due to various reasons, and that's why we need to help. These people are looking forward to our help. The first month of my foundation was devoted to this. We bought generators, firewood, other means of heating, and generally anything that would bring warmth back to our people. I believe that our big victory consists of small ones. Small victories of every person, victories over cold, hunger, and despair. And I believe that technology should be used to create, save, and help people not to destroy. I believe that such technology is the future. Earlier, I told you that you are the force that moves the world. You have a potential and technologies that can help, not destroy. I'm certain that by helping Ukraine, you can move the world in the right direction. So I invite you to do so. Let's do it together. Thank you. Slava Ukraini! Thank you.